Let's take a look at a rather neat infrared switch. Now, the infrared switch operates with proximity. So as soon as you pass your hand in front of it, it turns the lights on. Pass your hand in front again, and it turns them off again. And it's got a decent range. It's like far too sensitive if you're pointing at something like the camera hardware, for instance. But it's uh, 300 millimeter, roughly a foot for a typical hand detection. Okie dokie. Uh, the standby power is very low, 0 0.06 watts. Power factor is miserable, it's 0.2, but that's really what you'd expect of a really simple power supply, which I presume is what it is, possibly a capacitive dropper. I do hear a relay clicking inside. Let me disconnect things, and we can open this. There are four terminals in the back. Rather unhelpfully, they're labelled uh, L, L1, L2, and L3. In reality, it's neutral, neutral, uh, feed in, and then switched. It does, to be fair, say that in the instructions. It does come with instructions. Readable enough instructions. I'll take these wires out. The Christmas lights were just a really convenient thing to test it with. And we shall pop it open. Now, is the spudger going to work with this? Because I see it looks something that's more designed to pop apart the screwdriver. Could be wrong. Note the spudger is going to work. Let me zoom down this. So you can get a closer look. So we've got the glass plate in the front, and you do have to remove this during the installation to get access to these screws for mounting it on the, the typical, I presume, Chinese wall plate. And I do see some screws here. Is that just... No, I, I shall get the circuit board out first. I will take the screws out first and then start peeling the film off. I can already see a big infrared sensor there. It's a modulated infrared sensor. That's good because it's not going to pick up. It's only going to pick up the modulated infrared the unit is sending out. I wonder how it generates that. Could be a microcontroller toggling it on and off. Might even be not even a microcontroller in sight, although everything does tend to have microcontrollers these days. It's the easiest way to do things. Okay. It's a buck regulator. Oh, great. So there's a little buck regulator chip. Here's the tiny little relay. Is it a songo? No, it's not a songo. Um, and that's probably a little microcontroller, I'm guessing. It usually is. No, nothing printed on it. That's that's not a surprise. There was nothing printed in the microcontroller. Tell you what, then. I shall take some pictures of this, and we can reverse engineer it and see how it works. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. It wasn't too bad to reverse engineer, and it's quite a fancy design. It's quite... Posh. It uses interesting components. So on the back of the circuit board is the infrared emitter diode, a two-color, three-pin LED, and uh, the infrared receiver. And it's a standard remote control infrared receiver with uh, lots of screening around it for its highly sensitive gain. And that's what makes it so sensitive, because this LED is not being driven at high current. I would guesstimate at less than 5 milliamps output of the infrared. Um, also on this side, there's the two neutral connections together, and then the live in and the live out. Okay, I wonder why they've put this tape down here. Now, this foam is stuck onto the circuit board, and the reason it's stuck onto the circuit board is to mask the infrared, stop it bouncing off the glass on the front of the unit, because this press is up against the glass, and it just means the only way it can actually see the reflection is directly from outside the glass, or if this glass is scratched. It's also worth mentioning that they've allowed a bigger hole here for a bigger uh, infrared emitting LED. They've kept their options open. Let's take a look at the other side of the circuit board, which has a lot more interesting stuff on it. Okay. I shall squish along a bit. And focus on it just to be sure. Famous last words, I'm going to do it again. Just to make sure it is absolutely in focus. It looks okay. We have a... The neutral is the negative in the whole circuit. And the live is going to the relay. 
but also it's going through this fusible resistor. It's marked 22 ohms one watt, but in reality it's two orange bands on it, so it's 33 ohm. Then it's going through a standard diode to the smoothing capacitor, 2.2 microfarad, 400 volt. It's worth mentioning that they've added a bit of filtering options. They have uh, got the facility for a capacitor here, an inductor, but they've kind of bridged the inductor out. After that, we've got a bright power chip, quite an interesting little chip. It's fixed voltage, but you can choose if it's going to be 5 volt or 3.3 volt, but it's a very low component count buck regulator. After that, we have the 5 volt microcontroller. We have the infrared receiver with its own filtered supply. We've got the two resistors to that uh, indicator LED, and then we've got one resistor up here for the infrared LED, and then it turns the transistor on. Uh, which is over here, and that switches the coil of the relay. It's worth mentioning that the there's no back spike diode for there's no diode to clamp across the coil windings to clamp that collapsing field spike you get when it's turned off. That's a bit naughty, but but it's okay. Right, tell you what, let's look at the schematic. I've just suddenly realised that I've missed a component of the schematic. That's all right. I shall add it in a moment. I shall zoom, I just want to add it right now, because, you know, I say that, I'll add it in a moment, and then I forget, don't I? Is this in focus? Paranoia. After a few bad focus moments, let me just uh, add that capacitor right now. It does make sense to add that capacitor right now. There, the capacitor is added. Job done. Let's continue. Here's the power supply section. It's using a BP2525, and it's got the 33 ohm uh, fusible resistor, which uh, also limits the inrush current, a single diode, which is a bit cheap and tacky, they could use a bridge rectifier, but they didn't. Uh, there's no logical reason, there's no need that they to use the neutral like this as the zero volt rail. They could have had it completely separate, but this makes me wonder if there's a version of this that uses a triac, and that would require the circuitry reference to this, although usually the 5 volt is reference to that, it to pull the uh, gate negative for the most sensitivity of the triacs, but in this case they've got a relay. However, we've got the incoming supply goes via a diode, charge this capacitor up, I've not written the value of that capacitor, 2.2 microfarad, 2.2 microfarad, 400 volt death beam capacitor. Um, then it goes to the chip. Now, notice the chip has this select pin. If, as I've shown here, it's tied to ground, it's a 5 volt supply. If you tied it, tie it to v its own VCC, it's a 3.3 volt supply. Quite clever. Then we've got the usual arrangement with inductor that this is switching down to the drain, this current sense, but in doing so, this doesn't seem right. Hmm. Boop. It is now. Let me just double check. I've got that right. I'm looking at the data sheet here. And it's this doesn't tally up completely with the data sheet. The data sheet basically shows a full bridge direct far in the capacitor. But more or less everything is the same. That's better. Okay. I was just thinking there's something very wrong here. But anyway. Uh, the actually the current sense it's going to detect the voltage across this resistor for the current sensing so i'd guess the current sense is switching to the drain which makes sense given its position in the circuit board and that uh, causes current flow through this uh, inductor but the inductor because it's building up a magnetic field impedes that flow of current until it detects the current has reached a threshold here or it might just be purely timing based and it turns off and at that point uh, the collapsing field goes via this diode and it pumps the capacitor up so it's giving it double duty not just the building of the field but the actual collapsing puts uh, energy into the capacitor the voltage sensing is done via this diode and it's a standard silicon diode so I wonder how sense of I wonder how accurate this is to detect that hmm not sure because here's its ground reference which should be yeah it, they use some very devious trickery to do this but anyway, this diode is uh, used to detect voltage and a common trick I've seen is people using a uh, Zener diode up here to actually raise the voltage of a 5 volt regulator up to 12 volts just to cheat it if they've got that standard thing. This little capacitor here is purely for this uh, the power supply for the chip itself. Um, so we've got the smoothing capacitor, 330 microfarad, and we've got a 1K resistor just as a sort of load just for circuit stability. And that 
is it. Let's take a look at the active circuitry now. We have the 5 volt rail and the 0 volt rail, which is neutral. We've got that decoupling capacitor, mainly for the microcontroller. And uh, we have the filtered supply, 100 ohm uh, resistor and a capacitor just for the infrared receiver because it is very, very sensitive. And it's designed to detect infrared modulated at a specific frequency. So that must be what this is putting out in the microcontroller. There is a pull-up resistor, so this must be pulling down when it uh, detects infrared. There's the microcontroller, MCU, and it has three LEDs. It's got the infrared LED, and do you think, well, these visible LEDs, they're, they've only got 330 ohm, and although the infrared LED is a very low voltage, typically about 1.5 volts because it's such a long wavelength, um, it uh, has a 1K resistor, and that equates to 5 volts minus, say, 1.5. Yeah, it's going to be well below. It's only going to be a few milliamps this is running at, but that must be being modulated. And keep in mind that infrared receivers are designed to detect your remote control from across the room, so it is very, very sensitive. A lot of the magic is in this. Uh, it switches the two LEDs, depending on the state, uh, with three 30-ohm resistors and the two LEDs. And then it drives a transistor, a J3Y, via a 1K resistor, and it's got a 10K pull-down resistor, which isn't usually really needed, but they've used it. But no, back EMF spike diode, which is strange. The idea of that being when the really is turned on, it's yet effectively another in inductor. It builds up the magnetic field to actually click the relay in. And then when the transistor turns off and that field collapses, because there's no load, it can actually be quite a high voltage spike across this. And that's where you get this little diode. It's just designed to shunt that spike, but won't affect normal operation. Uh, and that is it. It works. I would say this. I wouldn't recommend putting this switch in a doorway, in the sense that if you walk too close to it, it will trigger it. It's got quite a long range. Um, could you make it less sensitive? You might be able to put a bit of dark gel across it. I'm not really sure. But um, it is uh, an interesting switch, and it certainly works. For, I could suppose, its main thing is it would be used where you wanted something trendy and fashionable, where you could go, oh, look at me, I'm just waving my hand roughly in front of the switch and it's activating. Or it could be useful for sterility applications. This might also be one of these things that's being sold off after the pandemic because there's an excess of the contactless switches that they were installing then to avoid spreading germs of people touching switches. Um, and the other thing, there are certain cultures around the world um, who have religious requirements that they're not allowed to physically operate a switch, but by simply reflecting an infrared beam, that's okay, apparently. Yeah. But anyway, it's quite well made. It's quite impressive. It's, it's got the little posh buck regulator, a little bright power one. Um, and uh, it's entirely functional, so that's a good thing. So there we have it, the reflective infrared non-contact switch. <laughs>